For the final episode of Spaceflight News, we once again prepared three interesting topics from the field of space exploration. First, let's take a look at how Falcon 9 launched the cargo spacecraft Cygnus. The second topic will cover the launch of the Electron rocket, which transported four satellites into orbit. In the final topic, we will explore the preparation of the advanced meteorological satellite GOES-U. On January 30th at 1707 Universal Time, Falcon 9 embarked on a 10th launch this month. It carried an interesting payload from the Florida SLC-40 launch pad. Beneath the fairing was the Cygnus cargo spacecraft, heading to the ISS. These ships usually fly on Antares rockets, but they are currently on an enforced pause. Both reasons are related to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. In response to imposed sanctions, Russia banned the export of its rocket engines to the USA. This specifically affected two types including the RD-181. These engines were used by Antares rockets on their first stages. The second reason is linked to the production of the first stages of Antares rockets, which were largely manufactured in Ukraine at the Yuzhmash and Yuzhnoye plants. As strategic targets, they were hit in the first wave of the Russian invasion. Northrop Grumman, the operator of Antares rockets and Cygnus spacecraft, is preparing a new version of this rocket. It is expected to fly for the first time next year and will use only American technology. Until then, the company has secured three launches of Cygnus spacecraft on Falcon rockets. The current mission is the first of this trio. For Falcon 9, the approximately 6-ton Cygnus, along with 3.5 tons of cargo, was an easy payload. SpaceX even used a shortened nozzle for the upper stage engine for this launch. This nozzle is cheaper to produce, but does not provide full performance. It is used only for missions that do not require maximum payload capacity. The first stage of Falcon 9 was used for the 10th time. Thanks to the relatively light payload, it had enough propellant for a return to land. The weather was excellent, and there are beautiful shots from the landing on the LZ-1 pad. Within a few minutes, Cygnus detached from the upper stage and headed towards the ISS. The capture using the station's robotic arm is expected to take place around noon on February 1st. On January 31st at 6.34 Universal Time, the Electron rocket had its first launch of the year. It departed from the Mahia Cosmodrome in New Zealand on a mission named Four of a Kind. This time, four North Star satellites flew into orbit. Their origin can be traced back to the Lemur 2 satellites operated by Spire Global. The currently launched satellites are expected to operate in an orbit at an altitude of 530 kilometers, inclined by 97 degrees to the equator. The orbit can be described as polar and slightly retrograde. This means that the satellites orbit against the direction of Earth's rotation. The number of North Star satellites is expected to gradually increase to at least 12. Their tasks are related to monitoring space debris in orbit.
Rocket Lab also attempted to recover the first stage of the Electron rocket this time. The helicopter capture had been abandoned before. Therefore, after re-entering the atmosphere, the stage deployed a parachute and descended into the waters of the Pacific Ocean. A ship in the vicinity awaited, retrieving it from the water and taking care of its transport to the port. In the previous episode of our show, we showed you how the GOES-U meteorological satellite arrived in Florida. Today, we'll come back to this satellite. Thanks to a video from NASA, we had the opportunity to get a glimpse into the hands of technicians unpacking the satellite. GOES-U is the fourth and final representative of the series of satellites named GOES-R, after the first specimen of this type. In this satellite family, you can also find the GOES-S satellite launched in 2018, which encountered problems with its cooling system, significantly limiting the capabilities of its infrared instruments. The launch of the next satellite, GOES-T, had to be delayed to ensure that the same problem did not occur again. In the case of the currently prepared GOES-U satellite, there was no delay due to this issue. An interesting fact is that GOES-U carries the compact coronagraph, or CCR, from the Naval Research Laboratory. This instrument, together with its twin on the SWFOL-1 satellite, will monitor coronal mass ejections from the Sun. This will be especially useful when the American SOHO probe retires next year. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spaceflight News Show concludes with this episode. For 15 months, we have regularly brought you information about current events in the amazing field of spaceflight. However, the production is unfortunately no longer economically sustainable, and this channel has not reached sufficient viewership to maintain it. Perhaps a miracle will happen in the future, and new content will be added to this channel. At this moment, however, it is very unlikely. In any case, we would like to sincerely thank all viewers who have followed us. We appreciate your interest in the topic. And we will be glad if you continue to follow space-related events in the future.